We're now in unit number two, and we're looking at lecture number nine, dynamic system models. What do we mean by dynamic system models? Well, we have a bit to talk about here. We're going to talk about dynamic models in general. We're going to look at state space models. We're going to look at realizations of systems. But then we're going to <clears throat> focus on the solution of the state model equations and modal decomposition of state models. So this is what we're going to be looking at in this unit. In terms of systems, we have some definitions. A system is something that imposes constraints on or enforces relationships between a set of variables. For example, something that, that takes some inputs, does something to it, and then provides outputs. A dynamic model is a model where the variables are signals in time and where the system itself changes in time even if no input is applied. The system changes. Properties within the system or um, variables within the system change with respect to time. Now there are important properties of systems that we consider linearity, time invariance, memory, causality. These are four important properties that we're going to take a, a quick look at in terms of systems. First one is linearity, sometimes called superposition. A system is linear if and only if we operate on a weighted sum of inputs and we, we obtain the weighted sum of the outputs operating on the individual inputs. So what does that mean exactly? Graphically it looks like this. If I take two signals, U1 and U2, multiply them by scalars and add them, then the system then operates on that sum, the output of this summa sum summation, and that's the output of the system. Over here we have the in individual inputs operated on by copies identical copies of the system. And then we scale them by the same scalar values and add them. So if the output is the same in either case, then the system is linear. Okay, if and only if. So that's what linear refers to. Systems that do not satisfy this property are called nonlinear. Time invariance is another property. So if we have a system that operates on u, some input, to give y, then if we delay the input, we get an output. If this is true, if the output is a delayed version of the original, then the system is time invariant. So if this is true for any input and for any time delay. So here we have an input getting delayed and then going into our system, we get an output. If we take that same input, operate first on, this, on the system to get an output, and then we delay that signal, if we get the same, if we start with the same input signals, do we get the same output signals? Or in other words, do these two operators, the delay operator and the system operator, do they commute? Does it matter which order we put them in? If it doesn't matter, then the system is said to be time invariant. Memory. A system has memory if and only if the output at time t depends on the value of the input at any other value of time. The system is memoryless if that is not the case. If, it, if the output is at the present time is only de dependent on the input at the present time. So one way of looking at it is this way. y is equal to s operating on u at time 0, where we have some function of u at time t naught 
Okay, and so everything here is as a function of t naught. It only the output is only dependent upon the present. The present output is only dependent on the present input, not future values of the input or past values of the input. A system is causal if and only if the present value of the output depends only on the present and past values of the input. So obviously if a system is memoryless, it is also causal. But a system can be causal and not memoryless. Okay, but it can depend on past values and present values, but not on future values in the input. In other words, the system cannot predict the future. So for example, here's a system, a differentiator. The output y is the derivative of u with respect to time, which is given by this. So notice that this function, so this is an expression for the derivative of the input u. And notice that as an expression, this expression is de dependent on a future value of u, that is u at t at delta t after time t, not just at time t, but at a future value t plus delta t. So even though delta t is small, and it, in fact it's vanishing, this is this quantity is is not causal for all delta t. And so the differentiator operator it is not causal. Okay, so that just kind of gives you an, an idea. We can define something called the truncation operator. That is, you take a signal and at time capital T, you chop it off so it's zero after that. So you have some signal, you chop it off and at time beyond cap T, it is zero. So this is called the truncation operator. It truncates after time cap t. So you can go through and show that a system is causal if for any t we have this relationship. What is this relationship saying? This is saying, so actually this, these are two operators. So these are operating on input signals. This one says I'm going to take my system s, operate on a, on a signal, and then operate on the signal by the truncation operator. This one says I'm going to first truncate my input and then do the, the rest of that stuff. And if these two sig the out, um, if I apply an input to both of these two systems and I get the same outputs, then we have a causal system. So we can express causality in terms of the truncation operator. We can also express causality for a given type of system in terms of how it is expressed. And we'll look at some of those things in a little bit later. This is causality. This is, and these are system properties.